Hey, good morning, guys. It's Sunday. Well, Saturday for me. I uh, hope you had a good Christmas and a good New Year's and a good first week of January. It's been a very busy week for me. I've got a big project at work going live, so I'd appreciate prayers as it's one of the biggest things I've worked on and I just would like it to go well. Uh, today is also my birthday, so I've been a little too busy to even worry about that. So, uh, like I said, very busy, but I'm glad to be here recording a video and to, uh, talking a little bit about uh, faith. And in particular today, we're going to talk about two people that were very faithfully waiting for the birth of Jesus. Uh, their names were Simeon and Anna. And if you remember, Jesus' birth was foretold for hundreds of years. People were waiting for a long time for the Savior to be born. A, a long, long time. Lots of people thought, well, surely it'll be in my lifetime, and then their lifetime would pass, and they would have to keep waiting. Well, they wouldn't be waiting because their lifetime was over, but their children would keep waiting. But... There was one person that God promised him he would be around for the birth of the Savior, that he would get to see the Savior. And his name was Simeon. And this is what uh, the Bible talks about in, in Luke after Jesus was born. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So Simeon got this amazing prophecy that he would be one of the people that would be alive to see this new savior that they'd been waiting hundreds of years for. And one day, the spirit led him to the temple. And it just so happened that it was the day that Mary and Joseph were bringing Jesus to the temple to sort of announce his birth, to sort of make it official. We get birth certificates now and social security cards. Um, you have to fill out paperwork whenever you have a kid and say, yes, this is their name. This is the day and time they were born on, um, et cetera, et cetera. These are, these are the parents. You would, instead of doing that at the hospital, you would go to the temple to do other official things to make it sort of uh, real as far as the government at the time was concerned. Probably less paperwork, but... Uh, still something that had to be done uh, in an official manner. And so they were bringing him to the temple, and Simeon saw uh, him, and instantly, this is what he said. He took the child in his arms. He said, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all nations. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people, Israel. Simeon came to the temple, saw their baby Jesus, picked him up, took him. I don't, I don't know how that went down. I wasn't sure if he asked first, doesn't really say. But he took the child. He was so happy. And he said, now I can die because you have fulfilled your promise to me as I knew you would. Um, he had faith that that would happen. There was another person at the temple named Anna, and she had a very similar reaction she came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. So those were some pretty extreme reactions. But that being said, with uh, these pro this promise from God and being a prophet that lived at the temple for uh, until you were 87 years old, probably pretty par for the course. If God gives you a direct promise that you are going to see the Messiah and you will not die before then, and then suddenly you see the Messiah and you realize that God has fulfilled his promise to you in an immediate, like literal way, um, you're probably going to be excited. And Simeon and Anna had faith that the Messiah would come, even though they had been waiting for, not them personally, but the, everyone in Israel had been waiting hundreds of years for this to happen they knew that it would. And when it happened, they couldn't stop telling people about it. Because not only did they have faith that it would happen, they had faith that it did happen, and so they wanted to tell everyone. And that's the thing about faith. It's not always just sitting and waiting and believing that God is real. Like, I believe that God is real and my Savior. But another act of faith is doing something about it. And sometimes that'll take you out of your comfort zone, Sometimes our faith requires us to step out and do difficult things. But our faith also is what gives us the power to do those difficult things. It's a cool relationship with, um, with the Holy Spirit, with God, 
and our own inhibitions. We feel compelled to do something. We have faith that that's what we're supposed to do. And we have enough faith that it's what we're supposed to do, that that's what God's telling us to do, that we do it, even if it makes us uncomfortable. And so this week, uh, as you start school up again, whether it's remotely or in person or however that's going down next, I know a lot of people sort of started school again after the new year. Look for opportunities to act out your faith for other people. Um, I know you guys will think of some things. Talk to your parents this week about ways that you can live out that faith, whether it's by just believing in God and really thinking about that or something a lot more uh, tactile, real, more, not real. Don't want to say real. Real is not a good word. A way that is more, that's more of an action where faith is a verb, something you're doing, not just something you have. Uh, I hope you guys have an excellent week. I love you, and I will hopefully talk to you again next week. And uh, I'm going to pray, and I'll let you go. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son to be born and die on the cross again, to sending that Savior after all those years of waiting. I pray that you will help us not only have faith that you are the one true God, but have enough faith to act on and do things that you're calling us to do, God. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next week.